So the topic uh, question number two is Genesis 6, the book of Enoch, the origin of demons and propagation of evil. Dr. Heiser, have you, you have argued for the supernatural interpretation of Genesis 6, that is, that the sons of God were divine beings that procreate with human women and produce a race of giants called Nephilim. What many people don't know is how that event was seen during the New Testament times mm -hmm. as related to the origin of demons and the proliferation of evil. Could you explain briefly about that? And this is, uh, again, people they say that, no, they're not, th th these are just the sons of, the sons of Adam, Adam because Adam, because they, they think uh, sure. they, it's the yeah. same issue with, uh, with Psalm 82. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, Peter and Jude would have disagreed, you mm. know, with the, the, the human interpretation because, you know, they have, they refer to the quote, unquote, angels that sinned. Okay, and you know, right away we have a disconnect there. They're, they're calling them angels. So mm. you can't have it both ways. Men are angels. Well, if you ask Peter and Jude, they would say angels. What's, what's not clear about that? You know, did you not read what we wrote? <laughs> yes, yes. You know, so they, they refer to angels that sinned, and there, there is no other sin in the Old Testament where you'd have a, a group of angels. It's plural, okay? So it's not talking about one particular supernatural being like Genesis 3 with the, the serpent figure. It's talking about a group. And, it, well, what about the primeval rebellion with all the angels, the third of the angels that Satan took with him? And Well, if you actually look in your Bible, the word third and angel appears only one place, and that's Revelation 12, mm. which is the end of the Bible. And if you read Revelation 12, it's connected to the birth of the Messiah. War breaks out in heaven over the, you know, because of the birth of the Messiah, and then the people of God get persecuted. Um, you know, that's not the creation. It's, it's the birth of the Messiah, you know, the, the birth of the child. It's very clear in, in Revelation 12. So the notion, and I know it's popular in, in Christian circles, it's even doctrine. This is a good example of how something that gets repeated often enough becomes doctrine. There isn't a single passage in the Old Testament that talks about a rebellion of a third of the angels. Zero. Mm -hmm. The only corporate, you know, supernatural rebellion we get, you know, that, that Peter and Jude are talking about is, is the Genesis 6 episode. And, and we also know that because they're sent to, you know, they're put in chains of gloomy darkness. You know, they're, they're sent to Tartarus, okay? Tartarao is the verb. You know, English Bibles typically have sent to hell or sent to Hades or something like that. But it's Tartara. They're sent to Tartarus. And that's an important clue because if you actually know what that verb is talking about and you know what Tartarus is, that's the place where the the, the Titans were sent in the, the you know sort of the Greek version of all of this, and it's very clear you have supernatural beings that father you know giants and, and stuff like it's it's this it's not the same story but it's very close you know to the, the story, but the point for our purposes is that they're not people, <laughs> okay? yeah yeah they're supernatural beings all right, and, and so Peter and Jude are picking up on this. On, on the Greek version of this event back in Genesis 6, and they're incorporating that language into what they wrote. Now, as I talk about an unseen realm, and I talk about a lot in reversing Hermon, and I will talk about some more when the Demons book comes out next year, um, that idea of being the offenders being sent to the abyss, you know, put in chains of gloomy darkness until the time of the end, you don't read that in Genesis 6, but that is actually the the original Mesopotamian context for Genesis 6. And I, you know, I spend a, a good bit of time, and especially in reversing Hermon, but again, the Demons book will come out and spend more time on it, talking about why we even have Genesis 6, 1 through 4, um, that it's, it's a response to a Mesopotamian idea uh, about the, you know, the gods civilizing the world and the wonder and the greatness of Babylon and, you know, divine knowledge being, you know, surviving the flood and all this kind of stuff. All of the elements of Genesis 6, 1 through 4 can be found in the Apkalu story from Mesopotamia, preserved mostly in what's called the era epic. Mm -hmm. um, but that, that has the, the context, and that, and that filtered its way. It found its way into Greece for the, the story of the Titans. Yes. It also found its way into, into Judea, where you have the Book of the Giants 
among the Dead Sea Scrolls at Qumran, which names Gilgamesh by name, you know, in that text. I mean, th- this is a whole matrix of ideas that involve a transgression, a supernatural rebellion that creates chaos in many respects on the earth. And, and the, the most, the worst part of it is, is the idea of depravity. Because it's from these, these giant offspring and all of the Jewish traditions are on the same page here that the, 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 the product of, of this event, the giants, when they, when you killed one, the, the disembodied spirit of that giant is what be, became referred to as a demon. Okay, they they were disembodied spirits that were sent out, you know, and allowed, you know, to harass, you know, human beings and whatnot. So there's a lot of academic literature on these texts that, that point all to the same place. That if you asked, you know, well, where do demons come from? Because we're never explicitly—that's the key word—explicitly told this in the Bible. They come from the they are the disembodied spirits of dead Nephilim or dead, you know, giants. Now we get hints of that. In the Bible, for instance, you have Rephaim, which is a term applied to the giant clans. In in Sheol, you get that in the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so there, there are vestiges of it, and you get it in, in Second Temple texts, as you well know. Um, this is again to a Jew and to New Testament writers. This is you know, this is the matrix of ideas that that how they're thinking about their Bible. And, and some of those, those thoughts, of course, wind up being inscripturated in the New Testament. And that's why we get what Peter and Jude say. In, in none of that do you get human bloodlines. Mm. They, they, they're just not even part of the picture. Where that comes from is you had certain early church fathers that either didn't like books like Enoch or other Second Temple books or didn't know about like a book of the giants or something like that, okay? They, they either didn't like the material or they didn't know about the material or rejected or, or, what, or whatever. But you, up around the time of Augustine, actually a little bit before him with uh, Africanus, they came up with the idea that these aren't supernatural sons of God. They're just humans. Yeah. And then that became entrenched in church tradition from that point forward, basically because of the influence of Augustine, you know, Augustine. I mean, he, he was so influential uh, such an important figure in the, in the history of the early church, that became doctrine. His view on this became doctrine for much of the church. But if you move back two or three centuries from the time he lived, back into the New Testament era, nobody thought the way Augustine thought. Mm. Everybody's taking it at face value. Yes, uh, he had so much, um, uh, how can I say, influence, uh, uh, in, uh, like I don't know if you're aware of Jim Jim West. He's always complaining. He's, a, oh, yeah. he's always complaining about uh, Augustine that uh, he, he should have not had so much the influence that he had. And also, <laughs> <laughs> that uh, and I don't know if you've seen. This. I can hear him saying that. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if you hear this, if you've seen these memes on the internet. It says uh, Jesus, Paul, Augustine, and Luther, <laughs> or Jesus, Paul, Augustine, and and. Um, and, and Calvin, Calvin, and yep. I don't know what's going to happen now. I mean, uh, we're going to skip and go right to Haisa. <laughs> <laughs> Please, I, I'm 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 guessing I'm a, I'm in a, in memes out there somewhere, but don't put me in that one, please. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. So so yeah, I mean, the, the origin of demons. So so this is going to be the topic of your coming book, isn't it? Yeah. There's there's a lot. Um, there's a lot in the. In the, in the demons book, uh, what the Bible really says about the powers of darkness that lays this out in, in more detail. It's a drill down, you know, just like angels drilled down was, was a, a book that drilled down into one particular subject in unseen realm. It's, this is the same, but just on the, on the opposite side. But yeah, yeah, there's, there's a good bit in there. And, it, and reversing Hermon has a, a, a bunch of the material too. Okay. So. You know, we'll we'll eventually get it all out there. Mm-hmm. Well, um, 